There is one thing that we need to address uh, concerning uh, XP Boost uh, event that we had recently. And um, unfortunately, it did not work for everyone um, who wanted to participate. Like, we're very happy with the XP event and how it went. Obviously, it didn't work for everyone. Uh, and, uh, uh, and this is a new problem that we're going to have to look into. And, uh, and obviously, we want to fix that. Uh, it's the first time we do this kind of XP event, uh, so so we're a bit experimenting here. Uh, but still, overall, I think it you know it, it sounds like for the people who could at least participate, uh, this was a lot of fun. I played myself and I had a lot of fun. The question I think we had last time asking if uh, if we would do more of those, yes, we would be doing more of those because uh, again, this is a, it was a lot of fun and uh, and everybody had fun uh, and and enjoyed it. So. Uh, we will, uh, yeah. You will see XP events uh, come more regularly uh, moving forward. But yes, we also need to uh, fix that issue where, uh, for some people, it did not work. Most exciting updates regarding balancing. Uh, we saw a lot of complaints uh, about nerfs for Saint Elmo, for example, or uh, Roboris, and. Those are just a few of the things that um, will be reverting. Uh, with the uh, with the second phase, for example, Saint Elmo will will have minus ten rounds in the next BTS phase. Uh, yeah, it's uh, we are so we are partially reverting. So uh, for uh, for Saint Elmo, for example, so what you and I think some people pointed this out, but uh, uh, you need to take into account that there was there's a buff to the M4, which actually uh, impacts Saint Elmo as well. Uh, so it gains power there. Uh, we've removed some of the power from Sentinel One Phase One, uh, and we're going to keep that. The one thing that we've uh, decided to revert is the change in rounds. Uh, so we've uh, we have removed the minus ten it got in Phase One. So it's going to keep the same amount of rounds, seventy rounds, uh, in uh, in PTS Phase Two. And same with Ouroboros. We are uh, we are removing. Uh, part of the nerf uh, to, uh, to kind of bring it up a bit again. And also for uh, Ouroboros, the rate of fire was adjusted following phase one, and uh, it just went from uh, 1,275 to 1,250. And, and we've got a lot of feedback on, uh, on changes, right? And, and of course, every time we do nerfs, it's, uh, it tends to uh, kind of focus a lot of the conversation on those. Uh, and we've tried to be, uh, you know, to be cautious with those nerves. Uh, uh, I've seen some conversations in chat when uh, before we went online on people asking why are we even uh, nerfing what works and why don't we just bring everything up? Uh, and you know, we've explained that already in the past, but I can do that again. It's you know, it's it's important for us to try to keep some balance. Uh, and I don't think in any of the cases that we have in this uh, in this update, we've really drastically nerfed anything into the ground. I hope not. We've tried to be uh, to be very uh, uh, very cautious with those changes. Uh, but we can't just simply boost everything to that level because then, uh, you know, if you have one outlier that is more powerful than everything else, you boost everything that becomes the baseline. Then next time something is more powerful, you boost everything again and you're just introducing what we call power creep, which means that uh, we're just making the players more and more powerful and then the game content does not uh, uh, does not follow. Uh, so. So we need to try to keep a, a power level that is balanced. That being said, again, across the board on all those changes, uh, including all the buffs we've done. I mean, overall, we have made a lot of things more powerful. So we have looked at the best performers and tried to bring the worst performers closer to that level. But then the few outliers that were above the, the crowd, those we try to bring down uh, ever so slightly to, uh, to try to narrow the gap between the items. Also, yeah. both Sledgehammer and Mosquito will, will retain the team-wide debuff. Yeah, exactly. So for Sledgehammer, we, we, we proposed in phase one to remove the team-wide uh, buff and make it uh, for the player only that, uh, that used it. Uh, this was obviously very unpopular. Uh, and we agree. Maybe that was pushing it a bit too far. So uh, we've decided to bring it back to what it was. Uh, so it will be a team buff uh, that you get uh, by, uh, for using Sledgehammer. We're going to change the value a bit, though. Uh, I think we're lowering the buff, therefore. Uh, so it's the team buff, but it's going to be a bit, uh, a bit less powerful. Therefore, we're keeping the change to Mosquito. Uh, so you can have something similar with Mosquito. You can combine both and, uh, and get even more buffs from that. And um, another thing that we need to mention uh, is the balancing regarding balancing gear and brand sets, uh, both favorite strikers, battle gear, uh, also uh, 
there were a few mentions um, that that a lot of you were happy with the strikers changes, uh, but it's important to mention that only the backpack uh, was affected uh, with the changes, and the main functionality of the four uh, piece bonus uh, is still there and just as powerful. Uh, but in phase two, the value of backpack stacks uh, will be brought a little bit higher from. Um, Point eighty five to point nine. To point nine, yeah. 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 So it's uh we're bringing it up a bit. Uh it's still uh it's still lower compared to what you have on uh, uh on the game today. Uh so it allows us to still try to make sure that we are uh limiting the cases where a striker becomes overpowered compared to uh to anything else in the game. Uh but it is less uh a bit less than uh, than what we proposed on uh, on phase one. I've seen in chat someone was asking about Scorpio as well. I don't know that we have it listed here, but yes, we're also uh, changing. We're changing the changes to Scorpio. We're kind of reverting halfway back. So the throwback event, the thing that I hinted at last uh, time, and maybe it was a little bit premature, maybe I was not supposed to, but then again, who's going to stop me? I'm already talking, right? <laughs> um, so we, 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 we just wanted to clarify a few things uh, since it also uh, raised a few questions from you guys. So first and foremost, this is the event that um, going to be starting next week uh, on October 8th. And uh, the main idea behind the event uh, is that um, you will get an opportunity to obtain some exotics that were previously available so from previous seasons. Uh, we know that right now they are also available through Countdown, uh, but if you're a new player, that's a perfect opportunity for you to uh, have a 100% chance of dropping those. So that's a really uh, interesting uh, event in that regard. 48 hours, I think we will have a new project that will be asking you to play, to replay one of the um, the Legacy Climax mission. Uh, and when you complete that project, you get, uh, you get that exotic guaranteed. And then yeah, we've also added the season caches to the global events uh, vendor. So when you are going to play global events, uh, you will be able to uh, to actually purchase season caches, and we've added ah here it is, and we've added the um, uh, the exotics to those caches. So for those of you that are missing specific exotics, this is going to be a great way to target uh, those for people like me who still do not to this day have the Scorpio. Some discussions arise uh, among players about us extending the season, so it's not really an extension in a way. Uh, it was basically specifically designed for us to have an opportunity to engage with a throwback event. Just to be clear, the Climax mission, without spoiling too much about the Climax mission, you will be able to do the Climax mission as usual. You don't need to have the modifier on to do the Climax mission. The Climax mission will also be made available in a new difficulty that is called Master. That difficulty, it's a whole new difficulty setting that we're creating specifically for Climax missions. And that difficulty setting, if you use master, we are going to design it with the modifier in mind. That doesn't mean you need the modifier. At no point you're not going to be able to uh, do it mechanically because you don't have the modifier. But the combat, the way the, uh, uh, the encounters are designed and all of that will be here to uh, encourage the gameplay with the modifier. So, uh, uh, so you may have a harder time to do it without the modifiers, but that doesn't mean that you cannot do it. Uh, once again, it will be your choice. Uh, I see someone, Yannick, listen, please, we just want new content, please. Uh, yeah, I mean, we are, we are redoing the season system. Uh, that's a lot of work. Uh, if that's not for you, if what you want is, uh, uh, you know, uh, a new map, uh, then just uh, wait a bit because we have a whole DLC in Brooklyn that's uh, lined up for you later on. Uh, we need more storage of fewer gear. Well, I don't think we want to do fewer gear. Uh, so <laughs> that leaves us one option. The last hunter mask on the board, can we have a clue, please? <laughs> that thing right now is not connected to anything, so don't uh, don't go out there and uh, uh, and try to find a hidden uh, hunter mask. Uh, there is no hidden hunter mask that haven't been discovered yet. Once again, there are a lot of questions about new raids and incursions, and yeah, I joked last time that I need to print myself a t-shirt that like, has all this frequent question um, answered already. I mean, there are once again, no plans, uh, but maybe in the future, in the very distant future. I mean, nothing is on off the table, right? So things can happen, but we do not have.
plans for immediate future. So, why are new incursions or raids not a priority for you guys? That's uh, that's actually a uh, that's a good question because it's uh, and I don't have a good answer <laughs> for you, but it's just um, you know we need to like just because we don't do something doesn't mean that we don't like it or we don't think it should be added to the game. There's a million things we would like to do with the game. Uh, you know, pretty much I think every single comment I see in chat of people saying, add this, do that, I'm like, yep, yep, that sounds cool. Uh, and, and that's why. Uh, there, there's a lot of things. So we need to prioritize with the time we have, with the budgets we have, with what we think is best for the game, what is the most urgent to do right now, what's going to help us uh, the most in the in the long run. Sometimes we prioritize things for specific type of players. Other times we prioritize other things. Uh, so it is really, and you know, that's your question: uh, why we don't think it's a priority? Uh, well, it's just because right now we have other priorities. Um, but uh, once again, that doesn't mean we don't want to do it. Uh, if it were up to me, I would have five thousand people working on this game, and I would do all the things. But uh, uh, <laughs> that would probably not be sustainable, unfortunately.